1 Samuel 18. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that would be chapter 17, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, together bondmen, friendship. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. So it showed that he did was there. He went home and now he's come back. And Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And now this is where the sodomites will pervert the Bible. And yet a perverted person will not understand what the Bible holds that these two were a friendship beyond a friendship. These two had joined together in wartime. They have joined together in battle. David's going to be on the run. Jonathan's going to help him. And you can have a love between two males or two females that does not have to be sexual. And only their minds are perverted. 2 Samuel chapter 1, 26. You won't be a pervert, then you're going to have perverted things. It says, I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan, my brother Jonathan. They're Jewish. David's not of Saul's family. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. And that's where they'll go with that verse. And look, it's a sodomite relationship. Absolutely not. When that is written, they have been through so many battles that even Jonathan's son, I mean, Jonathan's father, is seeking to kill David, and the only help he has from the kingdom is Jonathan. As a matter of fact, a couple of times, Jonathan is going to stick his neck out to help David. What these two had was a very close bond, and you will find this in life, and you'll find this of soldiers, when they go home, the battle is over, and they may be here, and they may be there. They will keep in touch with each other. And when they have their reunion of their squad, their ship, or whatever it is of the military that they're in, those two will be there at that meeting, and they will look for each other. And here they go again. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on upon him and gave it to David. Where does it say he was naked after that? Like they'll go ahead and assume that when Bathsheba was watching herself, well, she's out there butt naked. Where does the Bible say that? Where is the blame upon her? The Bible doesn't say nakedness. The Bible knows what naked is. It says Peter was in the boat, and when they saw Jesus, he covered himself with the coat, for he was naked. And even then, they'll mess with that word there. The naked is not naked. And gave it to David. So David is now wearing a royal throne, a royal robe. Where did this robe come from? Did it come from David or did it come from somebody else? Now when Jesus is given a purple, purple royal robe, is that Jesus' robe? Or was that given to Jesus by somebody else? Don't you see? Now we are seeing David, a type of Jesus Christ. Here's a robe that's not David's. And there's a robe that's not Jesus's that Hollywood makes the whole movie about the robe. And lie. I never watched it, so... And his garments, even his sword. Oh, look at that. And we read over here. Uh, it's kind of unique that. Oh, where is it? Is it? it says. In chapter 13, verse 22. 1322. Now, there's been spoiling since this chapter. So I would assume that somebody's picked up swords and weapons. In 22, so it came to pass in the day of battle 
that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people, Jewish, that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and Jonathan, his son, was there found a sword. And I wonder if this is the same sword that he passes on to David. It would be a memorial sword. Hey, this sword's been with me ever since I've been to battle. And his bow. And his girdle. And it didn't say he took off the girdle. It said, stripped him of his robe and gave him his garments and the girdle. And it doesn't say he took off the girdle. He could have been lying right there. He could have been on the table. Somebody could have brought it to him. Do you know what Jonathan has just done here? Jonathan is not getting the throne. Saul has ruined that. Samuel said it's going to go to somebody, your neighbor. So Jonathan has now surrendered his title to that throne that his father's given up. He has surrendered the sword over to David. Check that out. And when the battles used to be sword fighting, and when the battle was finally say, hey, you know what? We're giving up. We could see they would hand the general the sword of the loser. And that's what that's what Jonathan's doing. Jonathan is voluntarily giving the kingdom over to David, which should have been his. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. So Saul said, go here, go there, do this. He did. And behave, that's the first time that shows up. Isn't that a remarkable story that you'll, forever I would hear my mom would tell me, behave yourself. We're going to someone's house, behave yourself. We're going to the store, behave yourself. Well, that word the first time shows up with David and shows behave himself wisely. Matthew 10, 16. That's Jesus Christ. And Saul set him over the men of war, a captain, a leader. He got promoted through the ranks. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people. Everybody liked him. He had a good report. And also in the sight of Saul's servants, the non-military personnel, the workers. So David was loved like everybody, like Jesus will be loved by the Jews at the second advent. Not the first one. He came unto his own, his own received them not. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. We're going to go back in a little history here. That the women came out of the cities of Israel singing. That's the first time that word shows up. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel. That's the first time singing shows up. And dancing. You find that in Exodus 15, 20, dancing. Uh, Miriam, after they crossed the Red Sea, to meet King Saul. And Tabrets, that's the first time that shows up. Musical instruments. And watch this one. With joy. That is the first time joy shows up in the Bible. This is one of those places, first times, like, whoa. You mean we've gone this far? I have not ever noticed that there's no joy. With instruments of music, that's the first time that shows up. The word, music. You say, well, it's spelt wrong. Well, that's how they used to spell it in the old English time. Who says our language, our spelling is correct? And the women answered one another as they played the musical instrument and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Now, is that the battle of Goliath? Or are they just singing, rejoicing? Because look what happened. And Saul was very wroth. Well, what could get him mad? And the saying displeased him what the women were saying. And he said, they have ascribed, the only time that word shows up, unto David ten thousands, 
And to me, they ascribe but a thousand. Two times that shows up, ascribe, and that's it. He gets mad because these women come out and say, David got, got his 10,000, Saul got his thousands. Pride and envy. You could find something else to make David your enemy. There's nothing else you could find. They're singing and rejoicing. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Let's go back to 1614, chapter 16, verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. God's left you. God has left your kingdom. God's departed. Chapter 15, 23. He's been told. 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as the iniquity of idolatry. Man, nails down the sin. Because thou hast rejected the word of, of the Lord, he has rejected thee from being king. And God says goodbye. Here comes evil spirit. Verse 28, the same chapter 16. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord has rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and has given it to a neighbor, Judah, of thine, that is better than thou. Yes, Saul, uh, you've already been told you're going to lose it, and I know right now you've been told that that's the young man going to do it. He is so loved and he's so cared for by the people. And so I, David, from that day forth, kept his eye on him. What's, what is David doing to get, I mean, what scheme he's doing? There is none. He's being wisely. He's being proper. He's behaving himself. It came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit of God came upon Saul and he prophesied. Now he's prophesying with an evil spirit in the midst of the house. First John 4, 1. An evil spirit is prophesied. And we're told way in the New Testament. First John 4, 1. In the New Testament. John, the writer of the gospel, that's the latest gospel. John, the writer of the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 1 of 1 John. It says, Beloved, people that he loves, Christians, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Okay, this is the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So there are two spirits. There's a spirit that will confess Christ. And there's a spirit that will not confess Christ. It's either God or Satan. And when it comes to the condition of Paul, I mean, Saul, excuse me, we know that condition, the evil spirit. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as other times before he left, before Goliath, as other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided, the only time that shows up, out of his presence twice. And so now, David is on the run for Saul. Saul has become David's enemy. Because the women sang a greater song than about him. 
and this evil spirit. And Saul was afraid of, of David. Because the Lord was with him, David, and was departed from Saul. So you see that evil spirit now. I'm out of the picture. David's in the picture, and he's already been told. And he wants that kingdom. Saul now becomes a type of Satan. David becomes a type of Jesus Christ. And has been a type of Jesus Christ. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him a captain over a thousand. He's not the military leader of all the troops, now just a thousand. He's been demoted. And he went out and came in before the people. And yet David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. And the evil spirit was with Saul. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. 15. And when, uh, excuse me, wherefore when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. What is that? I find no fault in him. He is not trying to take my kingdom over on purpose. He is doing nothing to usurp the authority of the throne. God is with him. This evil spirit is with me. The people are glorifying him. They're not glorifying me. Everybody just loves him. And later on, he'll have a pity pay. No one is for him. But... <clears throat> Excuse me. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. He's a people person. Saul is keeping himself distant from the people. He's David's out there shaking hands with him, meeting him, working. And Saul said to David, Behold my elder, elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me. And fight the Lord's battle. Go out there and, you know, wherever there's a battle, I want you to go out and fight. For Saul said, let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. So if I, David, if you marry my daughter and go out to fight, the Philistines are going to kill you. It won't be me. You just gave the orders for him to go out and fight. And if he were to fight... And if he died, that would be on your account, Ahaz and Jezebel, and David and Uriah. But he had already earned her hand in marriage by killing Goliath. Yeah, that was said before back here in, where is it? Oh. Please back here when they're explaining. 1725, the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man? That's Goliath. That is come up. Show you to defy Israel as he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, David, that king will enrich him with great riches. That hasn't happened. And will give him his daughter. That hasn't happened. And make his father's house free in Israel. That hasn't happened. Now if Saul did say that. He's not holding true to his word. And even still people are saying. Hey wasn't. Now it, let's say if it's true. I don't know if Saul said that. Or if it's a rumor. But if he said it. The people are looking at David like. He's not married to the queen's daughter. He's not rich. So they're eyeing Saul like. You know what. That was a lie. And yet David's still being proper. He's not griping and complaining. And David said to Saul, Who am I? And what is my life? Or my father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the king? 
I'm not worthy to be of royalty. And by the way, this would be a mixed tribe marriage, which is forbidden in law. Saul is Benjamin. David is Judah. They were not to marry into the tribes. And if David did and will marry one of Saul's daughters, but not the first, well, in the line of the succession, David would have that chance to get that throne. What is Saul doing? <laughs> if Jonathan and his sons were to get killed, well, who's the next male in this? It would be David. Do you know what happens to Saul and his sons? They all die in battle. And the throne goes to David. But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel, the Mehanite, to wife. Man, the guy is an Indian giver. He is not true to his word, Saul is. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. She loved David. Get that. Now, I'm not saying David loved her, but it is recorded that she loved David. Later on, she's going to despise him. And they told Saul, and, and the thing pleased him. Now, there's no mention that David loved him. And they whisper in Saul's ear, hey, you know, your daughter's got the hots for David. She does. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. <laughs> oh, this is a great family. I will give him my daughter so I can entrap him, enslave him. Because a snare is a trap. And that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. There he goes again, trying to use the Philistines. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law, in the one of the twain. I guess that's speaking about the daughters. I don't know. There were two daughters. You got the other one, not the twain. That happened to Jacob. Jacob got the first born daughter and then got the one he really loved. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with David secretly. And say, Behold, the king has delight in thee. And all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son. Hey, guys, come here. I want you to go talk to David. This is what I want you to tell him. All right, so they'll go up to David. David, you know, I hear the king wants you to be his son-in-law. He's just too much of a wimp and afraid to tell you personally. Man, look at the character of Saul. And Saul's servant spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing? You're just really gossiping? Is this thing just really... You're talking about being a son-in-law to the king. This is no light thing, guys. To be the king's son-in-law. Seeing that I am a poor man, I thought you were supposed to give him riches. And lightly esteemed, that's not really true. Look how humble David is. He's got the whole nation that loves him. And yet the whole nation says he's got a good report and we like David. And the servants of Saul told him, saying, on this manner, this is what David told him. This is the humbleness of David. And Saul said, thus shall ye say to David, go back to David, I'm too wimpy to say anything. The king desires not any dowry. You're a poor man. I don't want money. You're supposed to make his house free and you were supposed to give him riches. But a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Now, do you realize what he's asking? You see how perverted Saul is? I want you to go out there and kill a hundred Philistines and I want you to pull their pants down and bring their foreskins, a hundred of them, to me. To be avenged of the king's enemies. They're my enemies. Go do this. But 
Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistine. He is not going to be able to go up to one Philistine, never mind a hundred of them. They're going to kill him. When they when he when they see what David does to one, ten, maybe a hundred Philistines, he's not going to be able to do them all. He's going to die. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. And the days were not expired. That's the first time that word showed. All right. He wants me to fight a battle. He wants me to bring a, a war reward. Okay, I'll do that then. David's the one that says when it came to the piece of land where the temple mounted, I got to pay for it. And David says when it comes to, to be the husband of the king's daughter, I'm going to pay for it. So let's see what happens. And it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law and those days were not expired wherefore david arose and went he and his men he's taking his army with him he's not doing it by himself and slew the philistines 200 men the king asked for a hundred he's going to bring 200 foreskins David goes more and beyond. If a man asks you to go, <laughs> he asks you to go a mile, go two miles, Jesus said. And David brought their foreskins. He's already carried to Saul the head of Goliath. Now look what he's carrying to Saul. And I'm trying to be clean. And David brought their foreskins and they gave them in full tale to the king. So they counted a hundred out of the two hundred and said, okay, that's enough, David. And I brought it to the king. And there you go, king. Now, can you imagine the eyes of Saul when David comes walking in with that bag or box? What do you got there, David? The hundred foreskins, duh. You weren't supposed to come back. You weren't supposed to break. You were supposed to die, Saul is thinking. That he might be the king's son-in-law, and Saul gave him, Michael, his daughter to wife. Don't give him that much credit. It would be terrible for David to have that battle, and Saul said, no. i got something worse for you. And Saul saw... That's going to be a hard time for laying out. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David. Only God could have done that. Only God could have taken that giant down with a rock. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michael's daughter loved him. Oh, here's another one that loves David and not me. Wah, 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 wah. And Saul was yet the more afraid of the even more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy, continually a type of antichrist. And when you read your Bible, mark where it says the enemy, because that's the antichrist and Satan. Wherever you see that, the enemy type of Haman. Man, Haman hated Mordecai. Saul hates David. It's always the good Jew being persecuted by the evil man, and usually a Gentile. Now, Saul's not a Gentile. And you're playing out Jesus Christ. You're playing out the Antichrist. You're playing out Satan. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth. And it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul so that his name was much set by. And we know who David is today. We know the story of David. 
We know the character of David. Too bad about Saul. 